Oda, you know, we like to believe that everything happens for a reason, that God has a special plan for each of us. But two years ago, when the unimaginable happened to Kate Bowler, that idea got turned on its head, changing everything, including her relationship with God. To look at Kate Bowler, you see a woman at the top of her game. A Duke Divinity School professor, the 37-year-old is a sought-after speaker. A New York Times best-selling author with a picture-perfect family. What is it that I don't see? I have incurable cancer, so I have a stage four cancer diagnosis, which means that I just go for scans and we all hold our breath and hope for another three months of life. But you don't look sick. <laughs> I learned that people don't like it if they know that you're really coming apart. My illness wasn't as obvious as other people's illnesses, and part of it was that I was a really good faker. <laughs> so how do you manage it? I mean, part of it is noticing how many beautiful things keep you locked into the present. Like my, like my husband I've loved since I was 14, or my totally absurd, completely narcissistic four-year-old. Bowler grew up in Canada, raised among Mennonites, where God was a constant and benevolent presence. She met her husband, Tobin Penner, at Bible camp, earned degrees in religion, and wrote a history of the American prosperity gospel. Then at 35, she was initially told she had terminal colon cancer. Did you get angry at God? I was pretty angry, yeah. I felt really angry when I would look at my family and I would think like, this is a very poor substitute for the life I promised them. Desperate to live, Bowler began an endless series of tests, surgeries, and chemotherapy, pulling out all the stops to get into a clinical trial her insurance wouldn't cover for Keytruda, an immunotherapy that's kept her cancer at bay. So far, so good, but it feels like I walk to the edge of a cliff and then I can just like feel the upward draft and in terror have to hope, like, please let their bridge be built, and I cross over to the other side. A bridge built on faith for Kate and Tobin. The thing I always come back to, I'm like, well, what happened to Jesus? What happened to the disciples? You know, why am I different from them? How can I expect that anything <laughs> not bad is gonna happen to me? How do you explain it when then you look at Zach? I can't explain it. It's, it's horrific. All we can do is just do the best we can. For Kate, that means writing four-year-old Zach letters for when she's no longer here. I've just always tried to say in a million different kinds of ways, who you are changed my life. And I could not be more grateful to have been so worried about losing you. She's turned her odyssey of living while dying into a best-selling book, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies I've Loved letting go of the idea God has a specific plan for her. I think it's awful to then start imagining God as the one who's doling out cruel and terrible lessons just to watch us learn or die. Where did you see the face of God? In my friends, in my family, in the dozens of people who showed up. Everything was full of people praying for me. Everybody was just the hands and feet of Christ. And, and that love really sustained us. And yet for all those prayers, you still have cancer. Yes, that's right. My faith isn't dependent on whether or not that works out. And I'm kind of done with lessons, like I'm done. Instead, she wants an honest conversation about suffering. I mean, I think things, yeah, I think everything happens, period. <laughs> not for a reason. <laughs> I do think things just happen and some things come apart and some things come together. If I could pick one thing, it would be that everyone simmers down on the explanations for other people's suffering and just steps in with love. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful ending statement. Isn't that, it, wow. what Kate says that when you meet someone who's in her situation, one of the things you could do is just say, I'm sorry, and give them a hug. Because people who are in those situations aren't looking for a reason they're, for what happened. They're trying to find a way forward. Yeah. And that's what you want to help and them And the do. explanations are too pat for yes. something so <laughs> profound. I read an excerpt of her book and I thought she was amazing. It's extraordinary. She's a beautiful writer and it's a very uplifting book.
look and it really sort of makes you look at things look at your faith it made her look at her faith in a different way and I think this whole idea that God doesn't you know make somebody have in terminal yeah. or incurable colon yeah. cancer because God wants you to suffer it's, yeah. not, it's that's not it it is like she said it isn't because I didn't eat enough Brussels sprouts right, so I didn't right. do the right thing yes. Things just happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are great with her, too, Ann. That oh, was great. Thank, thank you, you Ann. <laughs> Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.